Saw to Dave. What's happening, guys? Welcome to a proper sitting and bullshitting. I got my girl, my socks right here, keeping me company. Shop's still pretty much a wreck. So, uh, actual carry today. Dollar bar. A name model. This is in 3V from 2016. And it's an in, uh, integral. Um, still, it's a sick knife. I love this freaking knife. Kind of sort of what I'm aiming towards right now. I guess more or less like that style, I guess. <clears throat> but anyhow, um, I was sick as fuck earlier this week. So, you know, like last Sunday, I started feeling pretty rough. And you can probably hear it in the videos. But, man, I got worse, way worse. Like, I don't even remember some of the week. It was just, like... So, if you commented and comment back, my bad. Or if it was just a brief comment, then, you know, then we all have our times, right? <clears throat> all right. So, um, let's see. Uh, I... I got a bunch of work I'll show you that I did like throughout the week. Um, a couple of them, like honestly, dude, I, I barely remember even doing them. That's how rough I was during the week. But let's just sit here and bullshit for a minute, right? <clears throat> so, Glacial Texas coming up. I don't know if you guys, sorry to see my hand. I just want to turn the camera down a little bit. Uh, I don't know if you guys plan on going to Glacial Texas, but I think I already decided. Well, I don't think I decided. I know I already decided that I went ahead and bought my tickets for Atlanta again. I, I would have liked to ride, but. Uh, time off work now like if you don't already know me my wife and i own a business so basically if i take two weeks off which is what i did the last time i went to Atlanta, i mean granted you don't need two weeks but if you're gonna take your time right out three or four days and you know have i got family in texas and alabama and georgia so like throughout that you know seeing people on the way and that sort of thing like it makes it makes it a different trip if you're just kind of getting there and getting back i just wanted to take my time and kind of go uh, anyway, I don't have the time, so I'd have to hire somebody in order to replace me here to help um, in the in, in term. So it, it's just a time thing. It just makes more sense. And honestly, money wise too, I think it was like <laughs> six hundred sixty six bucks. I'm pretty sure this was exactly what it came out to um, to fly to Atlanta and back. <clears throat> so I'm already planning on doing Blake to Atlanta. So skipping Texas, even though Texas is probably a day ride from here. Maybe you know if you wanted to make it two, you could make it two, but it's not that far from here. Um, but ho hopefully the guys that are going, all y'all have a good time. I've never been to Blade Show, Texas, so I, I would like to go eventually. Maybe next year I'll try to work out time-wise. Um, but I already plan on doing Blade Show, Texas, so it's time to kind of save and get my mind wrapped around like how I want to approach it this year and that sort of thing. Um, also, if, if you don't didn't watch Steve's video, he's starting that 40-day challenge again, which is pretty much this past Wednesday till um the 31st of march which is easter um 40 day challenge of on his end i think it's uh no knife purchases is it trades included steve uh, I, we can always go through this every year but for me anyhow i'm gonna do no knife, no knife purchases so i'm not gonna outright buy anything which is probably what i'm gonna try to do till blade honestly but you know how that shit works like best intentions right um but i will be trading selling that sort of thing so uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to be selling, but I've, I've got uh, a bunch of accessories coming for the grinder, and I'm going to look at a different mill this afternoon, a manual mill. Uh, I might do something different with that. So, like, we'll, we'll see. I'm not 100% I'm not sure I'm going to buy this mill. Uh, I just want to look at it. Like, uh, I've got a few projects. So, I got one here from AG American Steve, which is this, or I'm sorry. It's, um, uh, how did I not? I'm sorry, dude. I'm blanking right here. AG American. What the hell is his name? I'm sorry, bro. I blanked out. Anyhow, I'm not gonna sit here and look at myself look a little more of an idiot. Um He sent this uh Protec, which I did the I did a 14 inch regrind on it. Shane, that's who it is. Jesus man, my brain is shot. Uh Shane sent this uh Protec. This is an earlier Protec. So this is a manual, but on one side of it, it's kind of like a wavy washer. And on the other side, it's just raw aluminum. So there's no bearings or anything, no bearing pockets, no fossil bronze. So it's, it's a weird kind of earlier protect. Um, but all the rest of it's still nice. So this, I believe, is 6061 frame. So it will require some machining and then some kind of um, bearing race put in there in order to make it a, a bearing knife. So like a project like that, I can't, I can't do that here. Like I don't have the equipment to do it. And it's that for, a, you don't need a CNC to do that. It's just much easier to do that manually than it would be for CNC. Even if I put it in a CNC, I would probably just do it with a DRO and just 
use it more like a manual than an actual make a program for it kind of thing. So <clears throat> long story, I don't know. So anyway, I, I'm going to go do that, uh, look at that, and pop possibly invest in that stuff so that's you know between the accessories that i bought and that mill you're probably talking about a couple grand actually a few grand at this point um plus both of those will probably need more accessories because that's how, always how it works you buy one thing you need more thing like you need toolings or call holders or that's just how it works right <clears throat> so uh knife purchases on the none for the for the at least at least until the end of march and then we'll kind of move forward from there i might buy one or two but i'll kind of want to save up a little bit of money and i might do one or two purchases at blade but I think there's a lot of um, classes and stuff that I missed at Blade a lot of times. And some of them were like grinding classes and that sort of thing. And I kind of want to dabble a little bit. So I'm, I might, their tickets aren't on sale for that kind of stuff. But I might jump in and try to do some of those um, classes and stuff this year. Just to kind of change it up. Experience more of the Blade show that I don't experience as a maker and that sort of thing. And like um, Billy's kind of, Apex Alpha is kind of getting into the whole knife making thing. And he's uh, completed his first knife and showed it on his video and him and I've been talking about equipment and that sort of thing. So I kind of thought about the idea of making like a, I, I guess now I feel like I'm moving from beginner to maybe a novice as far as the grinding stuff goes. So maybe like a intro to grinding, like as a, you know, I've been doing it for about almost six, seven months now, I guess. I think I started in late July or early August of messing around with them anyhow. Um, so I thought about maybe doing like a, you know, a six month into grinding what I learned and then maybe it'll help when you guys or if one of you guys are interested in, in possibly learning how to grind, which I highly recommend because it's so much fun uh, getting it. It'll drive you deeper into the hobby, but it also kind of changes your opinions of what certain things were like. Um, I sent a couple knives or a knife to uh, Steve Clare. Uh, it's a chisel grind. And he was like, yeah, I'm not usually fond of chisel grinds. I'm like, neither am I, but I got into grinding. And that's what changes your opinion about certain things. So like that that particular knife had a Jeremy Horton grind on it. And like when you see a Jeremy Horton grind, you're like, it, you could tell the dude knows what he's doing. So like, and same with that, like the DDR or the Dwayne Dwyer um, SMF that I got, the custom SMF. Uh, same thing, it's chisel, but like the, how those guys do those lines and stuff, they're just, they're, they're much better grinders than I am. They have much more experience than I am. Well, you know, a year from now, maybe I'll be able to do some of that stuff. I don't know right now, but it's, it's worlds ahead of where I'm at. <clears throat> But anyway, let me know if you're interested in kind of like a grinding synopsis from a guy who just started it basically six months ago. So I'm no expert. Like I always say in this, you know, I show you the after the work and I, you know, I find things wrong with my own work as I'm doing them. Um, I wish I had someone to kind of look over my shoulder and say, hey, try this instead of that. And that but I'm figuring it all out on my own. Um, maybe as I go, I'll find somebody that'll help me do some more stuff, uh, you know, in the, the making part of it. Anyhow, uh, once I get there. Um but I got a lot to learn, like heat treat and all that stuff like that. So oh, all in steps, right? All in baby steps. Uh, let's see what I got. I got a ton of work. I did kind of, it's like, you know, when I feel good, I'll do a little bit. And then I, I was, I went back to work um, midweek there. But, I, you know, when I get it, when I had a moment of freedom in between, either whether it was morning or night, I try to jump on starting a project, try to finish it later that night and that sort of thing. So I did get actually more stuff than I thought done. Uh, and I'll show it here in a minute. Um Trying to think if there's something else I wanted to bullshit with y'all about. Mm, I don't know. I guess not. So I guess I'll flip the camera around. I got one that I did earlier this week. Matter of fact, let's just do it this way. My voice was so bad in this video. I'm just gonna like impose it on, on my what I'm talking about right now. And so y'all don't have to listen to how sick I was when I did this. But it was for uh, Steve at Bluetooth Blades. It was a XM18. I think it's a spear point, and he wanted a little bit higher finish. So I did. Uh, Trizac up to like a 400 grit, the equivalent of like a 400 grit Trizac. I think after 400 grit Trizac, you start getting really fingerprinty. And me personally, I don't like that. Like if you're if you're into fingerprinty, satiny kind of finished stuff, then like, uh, not that it couldn't be done, but that is a different realm of what I've been working on. And that is a, you know a whole different skill set too, because polishing a blade, especially on a belt grinder, is a different skill than just grinding a knife. It's it's definitely more refined, and it probably I probably could learn from doing it. I just have zero interest in those types of knives personally. So right now I'm, I'm driving towards what my interests are, not not just you know doing stuff because I want to learn how to do the stuff on the grinder. I, guess, I hope that makes sense. Like. Uh, I'm in a bruiser guy, right? I wouldn't make a liner lock or a button lock or, you know, something I, I don't care about. I'm I'm steering my journey towards what I really like. Will I come back and maybe touch on these type of things as I become 
more proficient and better at what I'm doing? Yeah, probably. I mean, it's just, you know, I have, I'm going towards my interest right now. Uh, all right, so let me flip the camera around, show you some work, discuss a few things. All right. All right, so I already showed it a second ago, but I figured if you're going to do it, might as well do a close-up of it. And so excuse the fingerprints and whatnot, but 14-inch hollow ground on this ProTech. I think it's a TR4, early TR4. Hope you can see that pretty good. It's pretty thin blade stock as it was, so I don't know. I don't know if this ever does any good or not. Sometimes it's hard to see those angles, but it's fairly thin now. I didn't put an edge on this one, uh, if you know. Edgy American Shane, he does his own sharpness, so we'll let him sharpen it himself. It's it's not it's not far off, but you know, just need a little touch up. I might strop it up a little bit for him and then let him finish the rest of it, but we'll see how it goes. Um, brother Nick Edwards, I was telling last week, I need to. I'm gonna finish these and send them away. That that Max Ace and the Vero that um, DK Don sent whatever last week but he had sent this um 80 10 with the original goat scales on it will let me handle one of his uh this one feels a little bit different than the one the will let me handle uh and i didn't take the one the will had apart i didn't really even look inside that much i just kind of like you know fondled it or whatever else and moved on but um uh, nick wanted to regrind so we regrind his well I, every time i do this i try to do it a little bit different so this time I try to do something that I like when I looked at the overall knife, I like, I want the overall knife to look like it's, you know, it's customized, but it still could have been if cold steel ever was, ever would have made an aluminum frame. I kind of sort of wanted to make it. So I, I snuck that grind up just under those thumb studs. And I mean, just under kept the, kept the logo. So it's just under the logo. What well, we got rid of where it said S35 because I know my bro Nick don't like S35 too much. And now we don't have to look at it. We just have to know it, right? <laughs> Anyhow, I know I'm goofy ball. Um, uh, overall, these grips feel great. Aluminum, and I don't know why, even in aluminum, they went ahead and put pockets on them. Like, I, I, it just doesn't make any sense to me at all. But it's a much lighter knife now. And actually, after regrinding it, I think the balance point is probably right about there. So, you know, like... That's pretty good balance wise, I think, you know, like where else would you want it? So I think it's probably pretty good how it is. You know, it wasn't slightly blade heavy before. Um, but overall, like it, you know, it's, I still left the grind. I don't know if it's hard. It's sometimes in video, it's hard to describe how I am. But if you look at the secondary bevel, you see it's kind of thick towards the tip. And as it goes, it gets thinner. So this is exactly how I like my work knives is a thicker tip. So if you kind of get in there and you need to pry something or whatever else, you can still do that. But when you need to really slice something, you come back here towards the back and you need to really, really slice. So that's kind of how I set this knife up. It probably could use a sharpening troll, but I'm going to leave that up to Nick. I mean, if he decides he wants to put one in it, I'm sure he can do it. And if not, like if he wants to send it back, that's fine too. But uh, 80-10 for Nick. Uh, this one came out. This is exactly how I wanted it to. So I'm pretty happy with that one. Um, this one does have a little bit of a stick at the end, like I was trying to shake it loose in a minute, but you gotta kind of knock it. I don't know if that's something I did on disassembly, like maybe there's some oil left on the pin or something, I don't know, but action on these things is great. I wish, well, I guess if I had one of these, I'd probably put titanium with no weight relief in it, but I kind of like the milling they did in it and stuff. It all kind of works pretty good for me. I like this knife. But like I said, uh, Nick, before I send this back to you, I want to do those, that Max Ace and that uh vero i'm hoping to do that tonight but we'll see how that goes you know how best laid plans and all that whatever that jazz saying is <clears throat> all right so these are all chris's so we'll just start i guess back here well let me just first say this this was the uh, centurion rotter h and this was a vcp that did belong to me i traded these to chris because there was a fears for prey in here it's one of them super long ones and i had started working on it and he was like you know what my idea was to do a frame chop and he was like man it all sounds great but i'm not sure i'm keeping the knife and like man my mom was already wrapped around wanting to do that so i said hey man let's just trade let me get a trade for you and so i traded these two for that uh fears for prey i'm gonna finish that myself i wanted to do the mods more than i actually wanted to do the knife but i for whatever reason i was like i just my mom was hung up on really wanting to do that so i was like in a hell with it dude so I'll probably have one of those for sale in a little while, but I just wanted to do it. So this one's uh, a DDR, um, and uh, he could tell he's done some work. That's hard to see, but he's done some work on this one. Uh, detent, I can't remember, was the detent gone on this one? I think it was. It had no detent at all, uh, and it was way um, 
kind of bored deep. So I ended up shimming up uh, a detent to make it work for him. Uh, it's not the best detent. I had one of these DDRs before. It came from Will and then I actually went to, to uh, Chris afterwards. But this is still, it's fairly good. Probably 90% of what a, a stock one is. It still feels a little bit different, which I'm guessing the hole in the blade is probably the, the telltale factor of that. But it's still decent. Uh, but anyway, fix that one. Um, this one is the Old Dominion. This one has been on the channel before. And oh yeah, I forgot to clean that spine up. I'll, I'll clean it spot up for you, Chris. Um, if y'all remember right before, uh, I'm gonna cover one of the little things up here. So th when I had it before, uh, the stop pin, when I had it at closed position, you would hit back in here and you can see it's nothing. There's no good place for it to stop. So it was rocking in the closed position. It was rocking on that detent and, and, and giving it like lash. You can't see it anymore because I fixed it. But what I did, see this other little hole back in here as I drilled another hole through. Um, so you see the second pin I added in here? Let's see if you can see it in there. So now when it's closed, it keeps it from rocking. Like this is fairly easy process. Like if you have a drill press, you could probably do this. The problem is these scales are contoured. So holding it flat was, the, was a, a bigger issue. And then um, drill through from one side and basically after you got your small drill hole through, then you want to go ahead and drill bigger to add your pan. So you basically want to make everything as parallel as you can. Hopefully all this stuff comes out where you guys can see it. And like you can see now I'm pushing on it. There's nothing going on. So he basically just wanted to crisp it up, detent, and we got it. So I've already reground this one. I think this is the same one I reground. Correct me if I'm wrong, Chris. <clears throat> but anyway, that's all fixed. I just got to do the, I'm just going to take it apart and do this. See how that's a little rough in the backbone right there. We're just going to clean it up a little for him, but... Other than that, that one's pretty much done. That's my notes. We'll get rid of those. Uh, I don't remember what this one was. Is it Maverick Customs? I think it's Maverick Customs. I'm not a front flipper guy. If you can tell already, Chris is a lefty, so uh, I'm going to have to just wing it out the best I can. Sorry. <laughs> so we did a little regrind on that one. I don't remember what size wheel. This is one of the ones I did when I, I got done. I was like, I don't even remember doing that one, but I did it. So he's happy with it. I'm happy with it. This one turned out well. Uh, I don't even remember what grit finish I went to or anything like that, but just a nice little simple regrind on that one. This one's hard for me to even manipulate being front flipper. I suck at front flippers and being a lefty. So this is like a tripping over your own shoestrings kind of knife for me. All right, so the good and the bad. Let's get over this real quick. So this one is another heretic, right? Wraith, wrath, whatever you call those things. Um, this one was a, a hell of a challenge. Uh, Miss Soxa couldn't come say hey for a second. There she goes. All right, don't bump the camera, please, big girl. All right. Um, so we've done another one of these before, and it was a... No, I'll get into it in a second here. Um, he wanted to make it into a Tonto, which I did again, an aggressive Tonto, like so pull back as far as we can. Um, so I did the hollow 8-inch with the flat end of the tip, and then I redid that swedge. And on this side, he wanted to keep the serrations. So I had to do something to lead it from... At the time, I was trying to think like a MSC, kind of like how he does those big, deep kind of gouges, like hollow grinds somewhat in the middle and asymmetrical kind of grinds kind of thing. That's kind of what was in my mind at the time. So this is actually a 10 inch. You can kind of see how deep it is comparatively. Hopefully you can see how the depth of that. So I was trying to thin this out because I didn't really thin this out. I just basically took the black paint off this. Uh, so this is actually a flat grind, but I did it with an eight inch wheel. I basically just kind of, you know, shimmied it along until I got the finish I wanted. Uh, lines ain't exactly great on this side. Uh, Chris and I both looked at it and both were like, yeah, let's try to do what we can here. And I think it's okay other than like, you know, this fuzzy edges like in this corner, like the, that sort of thing. Because I'm, I'm fudging it and I'm kind of making it work. I'm not really doing what I should be doing with the wheels. Uh, and some of the lines are kind of a little blurred. But overall, I think I'm pretty happy with that. This side exactly, like if I had both sides unserrated, or if we were trying to get rid of serrations or didn't care about serrations, this is what I would have done on both sides. But like, yeah, this th this side I'm really happy with. That side, eh, it's okay for what my first attempt was, I guess, of it. But I just wish I would have done it slightly different. But it, like I said, it was a hell of a challenge. Oh, yeah, and to top it all off, uh, Rodney over at Knife Tastic uh, had already done this mod for him, which is like a, a staked on uh, top mount. Like, I don't even know how I could remove it without, you know, taking an end mill and cutting that out. Um I basically it's just swedged in there as far as I can tell. 
Um, so it's, it's, it, it created a hell of a challenge. Um, but overall, I guess I'm happy with it for the time being. Obviously, I redid the swedge, which I haven't really been doing a whole lot of swedges. I'm like, I can't think of the last time I did do a swedge. So I'm going to try to ease into doing more of those. Uh, I know some of you guys requested them, and I, I did or didn't do them for you. So I haven't done a ton of swedges. Um, this is a, I want to say this is a first edition or Skype 1.0. It may be, I don't think it did a 1.5. I think it went from 1 to a 2. Um, but this is on phosphor bronze, and when he when it first got it, I was like the action was just not great. Uh, definitely, definitely was something going on there. But the one the hardware back here was stripped out, so obviously someone had tried to have the knife apart and broke a tip off on it. So I don't know what they had done as far as uh, before Chris got the knife. Um, but it was missing uh, the, the way that uh, Pete does these is the blade thickness and the backspacer are the same diameter. And if he puts them on, or well, at least back in those days, and he puts them on phosphor bronze washers, he puts the same washers front and back. These are both the same pivots. So basically you could swap this out. If this never had problems, you just swap it out with the back one. It's exactly the same piece of hardware. Um, so anyway, I cannibalized the one that I have left, put the hardware on this one and uh, phosphor bronze bossers that were on, in mine, I put it in here. Why? Because I'm probably gonna put a different blade in mine, which is probably gonna change everything for me anyhow. So I figured I'll just go ahead and donate that stuff. That hardware wise, I'm, I might have to buy some hardware, but we'll get to that when we get to that. Um, so anyway, clean up the action on it and also reground it. So this is um, two holograms this time. So I wanted to do that same style. I'm gonna call this the Medford swoop. We swoop this one into that one. Um, on both sides you can see it's slightly different so this one hit the tip a little bit the angle way better this one's just slightly off you see that flat right there so other than that that's like the only fault that i can find that i'm like ah, i wish i could have done something with that but completely different knife now so it's way thinner before the way pete had done it uh it was flat ground and it came to you know it's v ground and then it did a chisel uh secondary tip so now you can see now it's it's all fixed so it's a uh, a v ground all the way out and then i also did this in an eight inch hollow too so i don't know if you can tell on video that it's hollow up there too but i, I think it came out nice nice steep hollow here nice deep hollow there so uh i believe these early ones i don't know correct me if i'm wrong but i believe this is 3v so even better as far as what i'm concerned as far as the skies go these were always my favorite i had one of the original i think i had number 24 um i always regret getting rid of that thing so uh, already told uh, Chris if he's getting rid of this one it's coming here so we're gonna we'll try to work out a deal on it eventually so I think what it's gonna be is I don't think Chris is gonna end up keeping this one so I think he's gonna I'm hoping he likes it good enough to hold on to it for 40 days <laughs> and then we'll work it out from there or maybe we'll work out a trade report whatever you know what I mean like uh but anyway uh, Skype 1.0 and you can see the action on this one's much better now too uh, if it was mine I'd still be doing other things to it like this a lot of this frame super rough um, his earlier frames stuff like everything on it was super sharp so uh, it definitely has some flaws that needs to be corrected but nothing that's like you know too too much this knife is just cool i like this knife a lot so that's that and then of course you see the saw two in the background i'm not sure chris where'd you get the saw two man you didn't buy one of the scales from me did you or did you i don't remember but it had, had uh the the uh, g10 conversion so if you have if you ever have a g10 model they don't have the, the hole exposed in the top. So basically this the thickness of that uh, liner that's tie and then that G10 on top of it. So this, this stop pin is a different diameter or a different length than what the full tie one is. So basically I just made them a full tie stop pin so it looks right. Uh, this is a scale that I made, so I didn't know that already. And then, then the backspacer is the, the um, tie backspacers that I made too. And then, I did re excuse me, I did a reground on this one. So for whatever reason, like, when I work on the bruisers, like, I like working on all knives, right? But when I work on the bruisers, the ones that I really, really enjoy that I would, like, love to have in my collection, too, the Saw 2 and the Sky, like, these are, these are the type of knives that I really, really take pride in, in doing and have a, a great time doing it. It's just, that's, I don't know. I, I just really enjoy doing this one, man. Uh, so, I did another kind of, it's almost a slicery kind of grind to it. Like, it's kind of, it's spear point slicer or whatever else it's got a nice thin belly but it's not too thin like this is this is my kind of working style this is what i like in my knives once again like it's just uh it's, it's thin but it's not too thin the slice better than a stock one but it's still strong enough 
it's still got a little bit of weight to it. Like when you regrind these too much, take too much weight out of them, they don't feel like the same knife anymore. And this one still feels like a saw tooth. So really happy with that saw tooth. Uh, now that it's all tie and get the, the full uh, stop pin on it now. Nice early lock up, no lock rock. Decent for a saw tooth detent. Uh, saw tooth detents aren't exactly great, but yeah, for a saw tooth, that's pretty good. Anyway, super happy with that one. All right, so uh, I think that's everything uh, for this week. So I'm going to try to get those other ones ground for Nick and have them sent to him this week. Chris, I'll get these sent back over to you. And hopefully I'll have some other stuff ground that we can show you again next week. All right, we're going to call it for this week. Y'all be cool. Y'all have a great week. See you next week. Later.